Okay, let's talk quickly about the evaluation of diagnostic tests. When you look at this graph, disease versus non-disease, test positive versus test negative, we're really just trying to tell how good is a test at predicting whether I have a disease or not. Okay? It's not anything to do with truly me having the disease or not, and what, what the odds of me getting the disease, da 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 People get very confused over this. It's really just about how good is this test at telling me whether I have my disease or not. Doc, you told me that I have a positive test result. Well, how accurate is that? Okay, I want to know how sensitive that is. That's what that means. How accurate is my true test result? How sensitive is it, in other words, okay? Um, if you want to increase the number of true positives, that means we're increasing the number of times that our test came out positive in the patients who had diseases. Okay, so when you look at this graph, little A, B, C, and, uh, C and D, okay, we have diseased with positive test. That's a good thing. I want my test to tell me that I had the disease if I have the disease. Okay, so my test was positive, I had the disease, fine. I don't want to go home wondering, maybe it's negative, maybe I shouldn't tell my wife that I have it, because maybe it wasn't as sensitive as I wanted it to be, okay? We want a highly sensitive test um, to be sure that that test result, when it came out positive, that means I have this disease, okay? So a true positive means you have the disease and the test came out positive. A false positive is, mean, uh, is meaning that the test came out positive, but I don't have the disease. That's a false positive, okay? It's falsely positive exam. A falsely negative exam, okay, means I have the disease, but the test said I didn't. Okay, that's bad news. <laughs> you want to know when you have the disease or not so we can start treating it. So, a false negative is falsely negative test. That means you actually have the disease. Okay, and a true negative means you truly don't have the disease when the test told you that you don't have the disease. Okay? <laughs> I guess that's the category you really want to be in. Um, sensitivity versus specificity. Okay? I, <laughs> I kind of have a little mnemonic. See the N? In sensitivity, that means we're dealing with positive on top, okay? It, it's counterintuitive. I, I always look for little mnemonics that this N should tell me that I'm going to work with a negative number. It doesn't. It's counterintuitive, so the N means I'm going to work with a positive number. It's not a negative number, it's a positive. Okay? The SP, the P in specificity means I'm going to work with the negative on top, okay? So I just kind of switch the, you know, I just know that it's counterintuitive to my stupid little mnemonic. Uh, that might be very confusing to you, but that's the way it works for me, and now it might stick with you. Sensitivity. How sensitive is this test? It's telling me that the number of people who have the disease, and that were told they have the disease by this exam, related to the number of people that were in that category over the number of people who had the disease but were told that they didn't. Okay, how specific is this exam. It is very specific if I have a hundred percent of the people who have the disease being told to have the disease. Awesomely specific. Okay, that's exactly what you want. You don't want a bunch of people having a false negative who are running around who know or who believe that they don't have the disease and actually have it. Okay, this is a very sensitive exam. If you have the disease, it's picking it up right away. Okay, it's super sensitive. Okay, you can think of it in your, in your senses, too. I, I'm a very sensitive skin person, so when someone touches my skin, I feel it right away. I know exactly when they're touching it. Okay? Now, this true positive over the total of people who actually had the disease. Now, the people who actually had the disease were the people who were told they didn't have the disease but actually had it. And what do we call that category? False negative. Okay, that's a false negative exam. That means they actually had it. Double negative. False negative. Double negative that means they actually had the disease. 
So you're adding the people who have the disease and were told they had the disease over the people who had the disease and were told they didn't have the disease. Okay, these are all people who have the disease are in the sensitivity. So all you have to know is how sensitive is it? I want to know the people who were told they had the disease and have it over all the people that had it. Okay, how sensitive was it in picking out that from all the people that had the disease? <laughs> I think my mouth is going to go numb from saying the word disease. Okay, now specificity is how specific is this exam, okay? You're going to see the number of true negatives over all the people who didn't have the disease. Okay, all the people who didn't have the disease and were told they didn't have the disease over all the people who did not have the disease. Okay, so this is true negatives. This is the number of people who had a negative test result and actually didn't have the disease over the number of people who truly didn't have the disease. Okay, how specific was this negative test result to this disease? Okay, that's truly all that you have to know. That's it. Okay, so sensitivity is all the people with the disease. And you just know that you want to know how many people actually got a positive test result out of all the people who had the disease. So it's just going to be true positives over true positive plus false negative. Specificity, true negative over all the people who didn't have the disease. So it's true negative over true negative plus false positive. Okay, I feel that this, these A plus A and C and D, B, it just, it, it, it's easy to get confused there. Unless you write it, you know, down when you're looking at the board um, and they don't goof around on the exam with, with maybe they put the non-disease in the first column and then the disease in the second column or the negative test result on top and the positive on bottom. I mean, they'll do all sorts of stuff to mess you up on an exam. Uh, if you're just following this A, B, C, D pattern, okay, it's kind of a cop-out. You really want to understand what's going on here. Um, positive predictive value is going to be the number of positive people who actually had the disease over um, all the positives, okay, just positive predictive value. Just imagine you're putting all the positive values into one equation. Okay, just everything with the word positive in it, true positive, false positive, just throw them around and know that you're putting true positives on top because that's what we always do. Okay, true positive on top here, true, true positive and sensitivity on top, true positive in the top of positive predictive value, overall the people who got a positive uh, test, uh, test result. Okay, so the positive predictive value is how good was this test at at okay when 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 you had a test result that was positive how good at it was how good was it at telling you that you actually had the disease okay how many of those people actually had the disease when they were told they had the disease okay you want that you want a higher number of people with a positive test result if they actually had the disease Okay, so we want to have a high positive predictive value. The more people in a population that have the disease, you're going to increase your positive predictive value. Okay, because it's better odds that those people have the disease. Okay, just out of an example, if you want to um, go to Africa and do a, 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 see how the positive predictive value is for malaria, test, you're definitely going to have a higher positive predictive value because just by odds, you're going to have better chances of having a patient with malaria who actually had a positive malaria test. Okay, you're not going to write that off. Maybe if you're, you know, in, out in Wyoming and you have a patient who has malaria uh, positive test, you might go for a second, you know, a second opinion um, or at least do the test again make sure if they hadn't been traveling outside of the country. Okay, negative predictive value, exactly the same thing. How good is this test at predicting um, that the patient actually didn't have the disease when it said he didn't have the disease? 
Okay, you don't want a bunch of people running around with negative uh, AIDS test and showing all their friends that they had a negative AIDS test when they actually have AIDS. Okay, you don't want that situation. Okay, you need to have a good negative predictive value because you need to have your patient know when he has the disease. Okay, true negatives over all the people who had a negative test result. So what is that? True negative plus false negative. All right, I hope that cleared a few things up. Uh, listen to it again, practice it, write it down, take notes, um, write it down on your mind about to go into the... Okay, good luck, everybody.